Alright, so now that we have the pump head uh, bolted onto the tank, let's get the engine and start uh, bolting that to the tank. Alright, here's the pump of the engine, and I have an assortment of bolts. Um, these holes over here, these allow the engine to slide back and forth, so they're a little bigger um, in diameter, and then these are not quite as large in diameter, so I would like ones that are kind of a snug fit. So these look pretty close for those and I think these bigger ones should work for this slot and they do so we can go ahead and bolt these in two of the bigger bolts and two of the smaller bolts and I'm gonna be putting one washer on the bottom side all right you can see here I have those bolts on they're loose um, just so I can tension it and then I have these two on so now what I want to do is I want to get the belt and then I'll use the belt and tension it and then um, we can go ahead and tighten those bolts down that are holding the engine so I have this belt Make sure we can get it on here all right it's loose right now so now we can push on the tank and pull back the engine to tighten the belt up. I'd like to try to keep the engine straight so it's not lopsided and then we will tighten up those bolts. Alright, so let's see if we can get this tensioned nicely. Okay, belt is pretty well tensioned where it's at so let's go ahead and tighten up the bolts. All right, so we have the bolts pretty much tightened. Um, there's one I just gotta get a little bit more uh, for. I gotta get another wrench for that. Um, but it should be good for what we need for the time being. So let's give it a start and see how it works and if the belt slips. Excellent. That's working well. So now let's connect up the plumbing uh, and then we should be good to run. Alright, so the uh, copper piece I think is in pretty well. So now what I want to do is I want to take my plastic hose uh, right here and that's going to go from this one right here up to the bullwhip and loader valve so it can tell the compressor when to kick in and shut off. So we'll just feed it underneath. Screw it on there, and we'll take a wrench and tighten it up. Nice and snug. All right, and the other end of that plastic piece will go right on here. And that gets attached to the bullwhip unloader valve. All right, besides the uh, unloader valve cable, let's go ahead and test it out and see if it builds air. All right, let's go ahead and fire it up.
right, excellent. It bear builds there. Let's let it out. All right, great. I'm glad this is working well. Um, a few little just tuning things to do to it. I got to hook up the bullwhip cable. Um, but this machine is working well again, and we've now got a new engine that should hopefully be working well. All right, I just want to show you guys kind of quick here how this whole system works with the gasoline engine um, so it doesn't overpressurize the tank and so forth. Um, so what I have here is the air comes out of the pump and goes into this one-way valve. So this one-way valve only lets air into the tank and not back out. Um, and then this right here tells the pressure inside and it sends that pressure over to the unloader valve right here. And when this is in the down position, it means the compressor is loaded so it can start compressing air. Um, and what happens is when it gets to a certain pressure, it pops this unloader valve and uh, sends the signal via this um, bullwhip throttle control, it's called. And it's got this little throttle cable that hooks up into the throttle. Um, and then it idles the engine and releases the air that the engine's putting out at idle till it needs more air. And then it throttles the engine back up. So I just thought I'd give you a quick uh, tutorial kind of of how the bullwhip throttle and loader works for a gasoline uh, engine air compressor. All right, so on my compressor here, I wanna install this uh, handle here uh, on the compressor, kind of something, eh, kind of like this, uh, just so I can have a easier way to transport it around. Um, this is just half inch um, black steel tubing. I bought it at Lowe's, um, two elbows and a couple straight pieces. So I'm gonna attach this on the tank uh, somewhere up here and just weld it on. I may uh, weld some other supports uh, from the tank uh, straight to the black steel or maybe even uh, from the steel here. But this is kind of the general idea of what I'm looking for. So I'm gonna go ahead and weld that up and then uh, we'll do one other modification to the air compressor and she'll be ready to roll. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and weld this up uh, on the tank here. I'm not really too concerned about lo exact location, but uh, just you know enough where I can, you know, where it doesn't look, where it doesn't look that goofy. All right, now that I got it tacked in place, uh, I'm gonna go around and uh, really tack it pretty well to the tank. All right, so I want to replace this uh, copper pipe here uh, with this this hose here, which is more of a uh, plumbing fitting for like a sink or something. But I think it should work just fine for what we need on the tank. Um, then this uh, won't have you know some of the kinks and the goofy bends in it. Um, so I just want to switch this out. So let's take this copper one off and switch it out with the other one. All right, we have this new one here. Uh, compression fittings, I believe, for both of them. And we may have to put uh, an adapter on this one because it looks like this one is a little bit bigger. Uh, it's probably a half inch thread there versus this one. Um, so I'll get an adapter for that. Um, and looks like we'll get an adapter for that, which I believe I have one of these adapters. So let me get that and we'll put that on. All right, so I have a 
compression fitting right here uh, goes from the three quarter down to the compression fitting. So I'm just gonna have to take the one fitting off on here and then I can go ahead and put this one on. So for the non-compression fitting end, we're just going to take some Teflon tape and wrap it around. Just wrap it around a couple times. Also, when you're wrapping Teflon tape, you want to wrap it. If you're, if you're looking at the part that you're Teflon taping, do it in the clockwise direction so that when you tighten it on, it actually tightens the th uh, Teflon tape instead of messing it up and loosening it. So we'll go ahead and stick this in. All right, the other end is a compression fitting, so we won't need to uh, put any Teflon tape on there. Just take our hose, put it on like this. And with it being a compression fitting, as it goes on, it ends up tightening up um, when you tighten it up with the wrench. It tightens up the fitting so it doesn't have any leaks. So for the other end here, which is going to go on right here, um, I got to get another fitting for that. So I'll go to the store, pick one of those up, and we'll put that back on, and we'll be ready to go. So that's just the last thing. I got to put that on. And we've got a uh, handmade air compressor uh, with all the different parts that I've I bought and I put together. And uh, so far, it works pretty well. So, I'm going to end this video here. Uh, I did also get a, another air compressor here. Um, I'll show you just for, for the next video. Uh, I got a tank and I have a new pump. So, we'll, I'll make a video about that and post it. But as for now, we have the uh, air compressor with the 6.5 horsepower engine uh, by Predator. As well as, I believe it's like an 11 uh, CFM pump with a... 20 gallon tank.